It's gonna be a little longer of a book haul video today. Uh, wow, we got a lot of books in. Uh, and I don't think they're all from tour this time. Got some Macmillan, got some St. Martin's Press. The whole thing just fell apart. Wow, it's, it's a balancing act. Hey, I'm, uh, for those of you who've been watching this, thank you so much for all the feedback. Let me know any ideas you have of things you'd like us to say, do, tell you, uh, move along quicker, tell us more about the book. I can't spend a lot of time reading the book. Uh, first of all, I don't want to infringe, but, but second of all, it's just not that interesting to see me read. Ooh, this is a good one. Shadows of Self, a Mistborn novel from Brandon Sanderson. Uh, so this is a preview. Cover art by Chris McGrath. Uh, this one is from Tor. And I'm looking for the publication info. On sale October 6th, 2015. Moving along. We're just going to move through them. going to move through them today. Uh, you know Brandon Sanderson. You know you want to read Brandon Sanderson. You know the Mistborn is amazing. Let's see what's next. Ooh, this is a uh, advanced uncorrected proof. Aaron Darkness by David Drake. So we don't have any uh, cover art to speak of there. You can get a little peek at the cover art right there. And we're talking about November 3rd, 2015. Coralus, a soldier, emerges as one of the most compelling heroic figures in contemporary fantasy. So there you go. Gotta love that. Good contemporary fantasy. All right, now we're into the big ones. <sighs> Always so satisfying. I'm going to throw these things over there. And this is... Nightwise by R.S. Belcher, uh, with cover art uh, by Trevilian Images, jacket design by Fort. This is a Tor hardcover. In the Morse, I'm sorry, in the Morse, in the more shadowy corners of the world, frequented by angels and demons and everything in between, Latham Ballard is a legend. It's said he raised the dead at the age of 10, stole the Philosopher's Stone in Vegas back in 1999, and survived the blood-sucking kiss of the Mosquito Queen. Wise in the hidden ways of the night, he's also a cynical bastard who stopped thinking of himself as the good guy a long time ago. That's Nightwise by R.S. Belcher. And that's coming out August 18th. That's coming out soon. That's why we have such a lovely copy of it. Well, this one's already currently open, and it is The Dark Forest, Sixin Lu, uh, as translated this time by Joe Martinson. This is a lovely cover, and Sixin Lu is uh, somebody I've been wanting to read more of. Jacket Art by Stephen Martinier. With the three-body problem, English-speaking readers got their first chance to experience the multiple award-winning and best-selling three-body trilogy by China's most beloved science fiction author, Cixin Liu. The three-body problem was released to great acclaim and was named a finalist for both the Hugo and Nebula Awards, the first translated novel to be nominated for a major sci-fi award since Italo Calvino's Invisible Cities in 1976. The trilogy continues with the near-future speculative fiction masterpiece, The Dark Forest. So there you go. Second in the bunch... And we're looking at an on-sale date. It's already there. Or almost there. August 11th on sale. Uh, I totally recommend that. That's, that's a really cool series that I, I haven't started Three Body Problem, but it's on my list for sure. I've got to read Seven Eves too. I've got to read Amada. And I've got to read Chasing the Phoenix by Michael Swanwick. Maybe. Uh, this one is Jacket Art by Stephen Martinier. Again, good work, Stephen Martinier. Uh, Chasing the Phoenix, a new, sharp, slick, witty science fiction adventure. We like that. From one of the best sci-fi writers alive. Surplus came down out of the north dressed in a Mongolian shaman's robes covered with multicolored ribbons and hammered copper discs. He was leading a yak. <laughs> Who doesn't like a yak? Adorned with red tassels and tiny silver bells. The yak carried a bundle swaddled in cloth and carefully tied up with ropes. In the bundle was the corpse of his friend. Well, that's a downer. Aubrey Darker. Spoiler alert. Aubrey starts out as a corpse. Will he stay a corpse, though? Who knows? This one also goes on sale August 11th. All right. Three more. Three more. Three more left in the biggest sword and laser book haul since we started doing sword and laser book hauls. And this 
is The Dinosaur Lords by Victor Milan. I assume that's Milan, so it's the accent, or the, uh, yeah, the accent grave there. Jacket art by Richard Anderson. Nice looking cover there. A world made by the eight creators on which to play out their games of passion and power, Paradise is a sprawling, diverse, often cruel place. Men and women live on Paradise, but dinosaurs predominate. Wildlife, monsters, beasts of burden, and of war. Colossal plant eaters like Brachiosaurus, terrifying meat eaters like Allosaurus, and the most feared of all, T-Rex, yeah, you guessed it, rules the land. Armored knights ride dinosaurs to battle? Legions of war-trained Triceratops and their upstart pe- uh, Oh, Veronica Belmont has to read this. Seeking to centralize real power in his figurehead, Fanged Throne, Emperor Felipe of Nueva Europa sets off a chain of wars that may blaze up to consume the continent called the Tyrant's Head. But is Imperial Ambition the only spark? Or are more sinister forces at work? You'll have to find out when the Dinosaur Lords comes out already. Because it came out July 28th. So you can go buy it right now, Veronica Belmont. Read about some dinosaurs. The girl loves a dinosaur story. I mean, she loves a dragon story too, but just saying. Here we go, The Edge of Dawn by Melinda Snodgrass. Maybe I'll, I'll do this first. This one is coming out, or it's already out, published on August 4th, so just a couple days ago. It probably did arrive before it came out. Jacket art here is by Chris McGrath. The Edge of Dawn. Richard Urt is a paladin, a warrior sworn to defend the world from invasion by the horrific Old Ones. After a series of catastrophic defeats, Richard's feeling alone and overwhelmed. I get it, Richard. But he is still determined to save the world, no matter the cost. There you go. Edge of Dawn. Available now. All right, last one. Here it is. The last one of the haul, the biggest haul ever in all six episodes. And it is, oh yeah, The End of All Things by John Scalzi. Wow, talk about saving best for last. I didn't even know it was in here. Uh, this one is for immediate release. Well, that's the press release. Uh, it goes on sale, let's see, The End of All Things. Uh, well, it's giving me the East novellas, but it doesn't tell me when the hardback book goes on sale, because you can get all of, all of the uh, the e-novella parts already, uh, but it's the same press release, so I don't know. Maybe put the uh, put the, the book release date like in big numbers on, on the front. Anyway, I'm sure we'll, we could find that out and put it in the notes. The end of all things John Scalzi and jacket art by John Harris, jacket designed by Peter Luchin. Also... I always love John Scalzi's author photos. <laughs> All right, humans expanded into space only to find a universe populated with multiple alien species bent on their destruction. Thus was the Colonial Union formed to help protect us from a hostile universe. The Colonial Union used Earth and its excess population for colonists and soldiers. It was a good arrangement for the Colonial Union. Then Earth said, no more, no more. That's the end of all things. Ish. That description kind of just describes the old man's war universe, so I guess it's trying not to be spoilery, but there you go. End of all things. John Scalzi. Pre-order it or get it now, depending on when it's out. And thanks for sticking around for the biggest sword and laser book haul ever. Uh, you know, sometimes it's going to be one book. Sometimes it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven books. You just never know. I think it's eight books, actually. We'll talk to you soon. Be sure to go subscribe to Sword and Laser at swordandlaser.com.